reality of the old ways of doing things in the new ways. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even... 28. Yeah. Yeah, we'll still get to the river. At some point, we'll probably dip, take us back down to the green lake. Yeah, I'm so... Uh, I don't like doing it uh, as much in a car because... Um, if you're not paying attention in a car and then you like miss a turn, you know, like you could be going a long way out of the way. Um, but I'm so reliant on the GPS for my directions. And I, like, I just don't know the roads that well. I mean, once I get outside of the North Loop, I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, like, the numbering makes life easy to a certain extent, but... Well, I've lived here 30 years, I've yeah. years now, and driven back and forth enough, and it's biting enough, and sort of have it... Yeah. I've lived here three years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But... I never thought I would stay. I just came up here for law school, I thought I would go back, but... My son was born at the beginning of my third year of law school, and my wife's family was here. But over the years, I've gotten to I don't think I can ever leave. The weather just isn't a deterrent for me. Yeah. Well, I mean... Like... Sure, you get in the south. You get four seasons, sure. But you don't get, like, a real winter. No, and I just... I am, maybe it's just because I grew up in Macon, Georgia, the yeah. hottest place in America. <laughs> I, I I have so many memories of being hot and uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Just, when, when we have a, a little hot streak here and then it goes away, I'm like, ah. <laughs> Thank you, Canada. Yeah. But, it, you know, things like fat biking would just not, it's just like not a thing. No. Uh, you know, like, and you see even, and like, it, it, the weird thing to me, um, I mean, it makes sense, but like when I first saw, saw it, is you see all these people doing like winter sports in the summer. <laughs> like you see people cross country skiing. Oh, yeah, on the little slope In the skiing. summer. Yeah. And it's just like, what are you doing? But I get it. It's because like that's their thing. <laughs> and that's like, right. yeah. And it's the same thing with like fat biking. The first time I saw like people with fat bikes in the summer, I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, okay, I get that you use it for the snow. There's no snow. And then at first, my thought was, well, maybe they just have one bike. Right, right, right. And that's, you know, it makes sense, sure. But no, I mean, the, the real reason is because if you do fat biking, you can use the fat bike as a mountain bike and just go on the mountain bike trails. You know, and like... It's a good workout, I mean. <laughs> yes, it is. I, I, um, I'm not much of a mountain biker. I, uh, I've only really done it once. Um, I did it a couple, like, trial runs when I was looking for a new bike. Yep. And so I almost got, I don't know exactly what to call it. It's the, it's essentially the same frame as the bike that I ended up getting. This, um, but the, the name of the bike is the Gorilla Monsoon, and it's a cyclocross bike. And, um, you know, part of the idea was I could take it on trails. Yeah. And um, so I was like, uh, I'm gonna take this out on a trail and just see, do I feel comfortable without shocks yeah. on the trail? And there, you know, it's not a fat tire bike. It's, you know, it's a little bit wider than these. Mm -hmm. Um, and no shots. Yeah, and um, and so I um, I did that, and while I was out there, I don't know why this had never occurred to me before, but while I was out there, I realized I could just use my fat bike. Like, what's the point of getting this bike? I mean, the whole point of getting that bike was like, 
I could take it on trails. I was like, well, I already have a bike I can take on trails. So I was like, well, I've never done it when there wasn't snow on the ground. So let me take it out once and just see how do I feel. Um, and so I don't think I've ever been here, period. Like car, bike, anything. Uh, yeah. So maybe, what hospital is this? This is Okay, so we're getting close to like uh, the... Uh, uh, the um uh the global market yeah, yeah. we're not so far from that okay. yeah oh, okay um so somewhere around here one of my friends had their baby one of the abbott yeah. things but i still don't know if i've ever been by that wells fargo or not but anyway um but yeah so so that wells fargo building is the original honeywell and honeywell was based in Oh, uh, nice. So where's Huntingwell now? It's, it's uh, based in Raytheon bought all. Uh, Raytheon bought Huntingwell, and so the headquarters is now in New Jersey. Ah. Uh, they have they have offices here. Yeah. Is Raytheon? Do they do batteries? I think so. Is there another one? Is there like Rayovac or something like that? Rayovac's a battery. The battery? Okay. Raytheon signals. Okay. Rayovac, I, they're headquartered somewhere where like I've lived. Okay. I think Madison, but I wouldn't swear to that. Madison's also the home place of the um, electronic medical records. Well, I used to work there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, strictly speaking, they're not based in Madison, but... Oh, okay. They have a big place there, right? Well, it's not in Madison. Oh. It's in Verona. It is, yeah. Okay. They used to be based in Madison, and then they moved out to the Burbs. Okay. It's almost like not even the Burbs. I mean, like, it's literally on a farm. <laughs> uh, but, um... So, the story goes that, um... They went out to Microsoft's campus to do a tour um, and somehow, and they're on 50 acres, and somehow um, they ended up writing down 500 acres. <laughs> um, and so they got a lot more space than they needed. And so now there's like a, there's literally a functioning farm on the Epic campus. Um, <laughs> And uh, and I'm sure Verona cut on you know a sweet deal to move out there, and that's how those things work. <laughs> um, but yeah, and last that I had heard, um, they still had the uh, the old school building that they had in Madison um, on Tokay Boulevard. Um, but it's oh, not, this is ah, but there is like an Abbott, like pregnancy center or something too. There's like multiple, <coughs> multiple buildings. Oh that, yeah. The mother baby center. So. We have a, uh, actually I don't know that it's open to the public yet, but they had a, um, we have a new food hall, like right by my place, pretty much. Um, and uh, they had a, uh, a soft opening a couple weeks ago, okay. and we went. Not all of the places were there. Um, no, there was two, there's that one and the one downtown, the Dayton's. Yeah, that I don't know when that's gonna. I don't think that's open yet. Okay. 
mostly vegetarian. You'll have some chicken. Ah. But all the dishes have avocado. And he was talking to both of those places. Ah. The, uh... Do you know anything about Lucky Cricket? <laughs> yeah. The Andrew Zimmerns thing? Yeah. Yeah. You all right? Ah. Uh, um, he was talking about kind of bad mouthing at family Chinese restaurants. And he knew better or something. Well, I think, I mean, in a way, like, what he said was stupid. Let's, let's just, there's, let's just say that up front. But, I mean, the way that I kind of, Re like was reading into what he was saying was that like American Chinese food is not Chinese food right. and like most people know that but I think that like you know like yeah my sister is married to a guy from Italy what we consider red sauce Italian yeah is not what he grew up. <laughs> yeah. But it's interesting because we, we went last night. They didn't they didn't uh like remodel well did you know that they closed? They did. And okay. they, it's like a new menu, like pan Asian. Yeah, it's got, got a lot of the same stuff. But I kinda don't get it, like can't you develop a menu without closing the place down? Yeah. I mean, they didn't remodel. Well, they put up like a couple new posters, but literally that was it. Yeah. So, um, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, he's got a whole thing going on though. It's not just, I mean, he's got a, I got a former student who works for him, uh, a social media manager. Ah. Uh, He really likes Rye's bagels. I don't know if you've had their bagels. That's another place that's like right by my place. Okay. They have these shirts that uh, they ha they say New York and then it's crossed out and Montreal and it's crossed out and then it says Minneapolis. But Andrew Zimmern says that like outside of New York, like that place is like like those are like the only bagels he'll eat outside of New York um, and uh, of course he grew up in New York so um, I guess I have to take from that that Montreal has a big bagel scene which I wasn't aware of until I started seeing those shirts but otherwise like why would you do that I don't really know what's happening here um, but uh but yeah, if you ever uh, they ha ever have a catered thing, well, I guess I don't know. Like bagels, do they have a lot of sodium too? No, it's, it's the carbohydrates. Oh, it's carbohydrates for you. So you just don't even. Yeah. So. I don't do croissants. Ah, uh, that's. Mainly just because it just life's just easier. Yeah, that's fair. Well. I think pretty much everything they have is bagels, so... <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird, I mean, it works for me, but it's yeah. really funny because once you stop eating bread, you realize it's like, it's part of like religious ceremonies, yeah. it's part of like, you know, all this cultural stuff. For sure. It's really a, so no pasta, no... No, potatoes and corn I'm okay with, but okay. Like pasta and rice... Bread. Yeah. Anything with yeah, I just I don't know. I, part of it is it's just I count carbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just I can eliminate you know four oh, carbs. And I don't yeah, yeah, yeah. Bread. For sure. Well, if you ever find yourself at Lucky Cricket, the mushrooms are good. Oh yeah. Um, the other dishes we had last night were noodle dishes. So. You see, I do like. Okay. Noodles, so yeah. I do a lot of stuff with vegetables like cauliflower, yeah. and beans and asparagus and all kinds of squash. I mean, like, it's possible to recreate some of the 
those. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this area I'm familiar with. I was actually uh, on, I didn't actually cross this bridge, but uh, I was on Minnehaha earlier. That's what I took to get home. Um, like weirdly enough, like French fries over the boundary. Huh. Like, nobody believes Are we me. Like, over the bridge? Okay. I'm like, God, I test my blood sugar, man. <laughs> yeah. Especially if it's whole potatoes that have just been quick fried. I mean, I can't eat a bucket. <laughs> Who can? <laughs> I'll get a burger with no buns, I'll get the fries. Yeah. What about potato bread? No. Okay. I mean, I'm not trying to like no, 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 I'm just dog in. I'm just curious. Anything that's been sort of ground into a powder and then reconstituted. Ah. Seems to have a glycemic index. Ah, interesting. You know, there was a big study done um, where they fed people the same amount of calories and the same amount of fiber, but one group ate processed food okay, yep. and the other group ate unprocessed food. And the people that ate the unprocessed food had a way better background. Yes, 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 yes. So that's what I talk about, like Jay oh, Selby's. Oh. Yeah. It's vegan, but it's processed as shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's vegan junk food. Right. Oh yeah, I mean. Full of sugar and fat and salt. Well, and that's the thing about, I mean, vegan. It's a little harder <laughs> than vegetarian as far as like, you know, just eating unhealthy. But it's like. All right, let's think about some vegan foods. Olive oil, right. avocado oil. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. you know, 